probably the thing that is uh, most known for would be helping to evangelize the use of the internet in public libraries. Uh, in the United States, now, if you walk into a library, you'll see public computers uh, set up and people can get free time on them, but it wasn't always like that. And libraries were generally known for books and for literacy and, you know, if you had a LP record, that was like a, a big deal that you were getting into media. So the notion that somebody would put a computer in a public library was very unknown. And, and that was the first year I did that was 1981. Of course, it wasn't connected to anything, but we did have software, how to learn basic and uh, how to use a word processor and uh, VisiCalc was the spreadsheet of the moment. You know, we had a couple of games, things like that. It was very popular. And that sort of set the stage for what we did next, which was we opened up an electronic bulletin board system for the public in 19, well, let's see, it was 1983 that we started the BBS system. And people were just starting to get home computers then and starting to get modems and trying to figure out where to call. So people at home, hobbyists, would run these BBS systems, but we thought it would be a good idea for a public library to run one because you know, we were going to be open and accessible. The problem was we only had one phone line at the library, so we had to only run this BBS at night on our 1200 baud modem. <laughs> so we called it the night shift, and only one person could call at a time. But we did start an online community very early in our upstate New York community that way. And that, again, set the stage for the internet, which was a few years later. We got our first internet connection in 1991 and opened it up to a mediated public access in 1992. And that was like opening the floodgates. You know, the internet just became so exciting to people and everyone wanted to learn how to be on it. You miss 100% of the shots that you never take. And if you do take a risk, you're going to learn something. It might be good or it might be bad, but you're going to learn something. And I was all about learning something in the library business because in my idea that complacency is the real enemy. So in library land really was not popular, the, uh, the idea of putting the internet out for the public because it was not going to be mediated information. It wasn't going to be librarians being the gatekeepers of knowledge and wisdom anymore. And now people could get at this themselves, and not only that, but create their own resources and put them up. So there was a lot of pushback early on from other librarians, and I went around the country and did a lot of talks evangelizing use of the internet, um, not only you know, B2B for libraries, but also for the public. And that was, um, that was a hard push, but uh, we got there. And yay libraries is what I say about that. I had a lot of mentors along the way that inspired me. One, I've got to mention uh, Dr. Charles McClure. Uh, he was a social science researcher about the internet uh, in public libraries, and he kept encouraging me as, as you know, my, my dealings with early internet access went on. Also, Monica Ertel from the Apple Corporate Library and Steve Sisler from the Apple Corporate Library. Uh, they helped disseminate not only information but also equipment and grants to libraries that were willing to take a risk. And uh, they had the Apple Library Users Group, which uh, also helped further things. Well, you know, the internet back in the day was considered the Wild West. And then it got kind of civilized for a while, but now it's going back there. And there's a lot of these things were predicted. And we were told about them, we were warned about them. Um, things like loss of privacy and um, malevolence on the internet and malware. Uh, we were warned and a lot of us some um, put on our rose colored glasses and said, oh well, <laughs> you know, let's go chasing waterfalls anyway. And uh, we did that, but, and, and there has to be more stringent concern about these issues than there is currently. I think it's getting there. Uh, but I'm worried about it. I'm worried about it uh, getting even worse so that people would be abandoning parts of it. I mean, we see people uh, getting off Facebook, for example, now because they don't like being a product uh, of their personal information. But, and I think we'll see more and more of that. 
my thing is take a risk. Complacency is, is, must be rejected. You know, librarianship is, is a field where you have to keep growing. We've, we've all, we learned in graduate school that it was, uh, the, the library's a growing organism, and it, it needs to be that way. You know, you don't want to ever just say, okay, we've won, here's a library, we've done it. Uh, you want to keep on pushing the envelope. And I think it was Wayne Gretzky who said, the, the hockey player, said the secret of his success was to move to where the puck was going to be. And I like to think about that, like where is the puck going to be as far as the public, uh, with the public library. And sometimes you guess wrong, but sometimes you guess right. And we sure did with public internet access. I was happy with a lot of the early resources on the internet, but I think now um, I'm astounded by some of the things on the internet. And I'm, I'm so grateful that they're there. I do genealogy as a hobby. And for example, I, my head is off to people who did genealogy back in the day when uh, you had to go to a, a lot of um, town halls and repositories and archives. Uh, physically, you had to go there. But now I can get a lot of that online, and my research has been made a lot better. So um, the resources that are coming up that are authoritative and uh, authentic are um, a surprise to me and, and a happy surprise to me. I think the privacy problem is, is probably the worst thing and the thing that I worry about a lot and the thing that I try to evangelize to my friends, you know, be sure that you've got two-factor authentication and, and other, other things uh, set up. And so that's the worrisome thing to me. And the worrisome thing to me is that it will be so bad that people will just start leaving. Or the other thing is, um, if you are a content creator, uh, the, the fact that your copyright is not always um, acknowledged and maintained by other people that just try to steal your content. Because one of the things I did as a content provider myself under the NetMom Aegis was um, write about good websites for kids early on. This was all pre-Google, so the things were hard to find, and I hated to find uh, my content that I had worked hard to provide uh, at, you know, a newspaper in another country, or being, in one case, it was being used as um, fodder for uh, one of the U.S. Amer American cities, a large city here, and they didn't know that it was, you know, copyrighted by me. They were just using it uh, under their own private label. So. Uh, lack of copyright is a big problem for people that are content providers. I have the same hope <laughs> in 2019 that all of the information that we are able to get to now could be used to solve these grand challenges that we still have. And I love seeing people like you and people, you know, young people really standing out and using these technologies to make a difference in the world. And that's my hope.